<laughs> All right. Welcome. Um, Thank you too. We are here in the land of I'm not trying to kill you with uh, four lovely spaceoids. Um, and we're going to play Scum and Villainy. We've got three weeks of break from Apocalypse World. And so I thought, you know what? I'm sure we can fit an entire space opera into that time. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm going to go backwards this time um, and get, um, uh, I'm going to introduce myself and then we'll introduce each of the people in turn. So hi, I'm Ash. I'm your MC for today. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, and this is my channel. We do streaming, we do role-playing games on Mondays, and then we do games on Wednesdays and, uh, and Saturdays. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at acjack. Uh, Maze, who are you? What do you do? What are your pronouns? Hi, my name is Maze. I go by they, them, theirs. Um, I am a composer, sound designer, and audio integrator. I like that sort of stuff, you can find me at Maze Wallen on Twitter. Cool. Awesome. Melody, who are you? What do you do? What are your pronouns? Uh, hello, I, I am Melody. Uh, she, her, hers pronouns. Um, I loiter on the internet. I write about um, history. Uh, nearly finished PhD. You can find me at, uh, at Magic Space Girl uh, on Twitter. Cool. Awesome. David, do you want to give us an introduction? Who are you? What do you do? What are your pronouns? Um, he, him, his. Um, uh, I'm a games journalist, um, big nerdy role player as well. Um, you can find me and my writing journal, where I write about some of the games I do, at throwingwordsatthestars.com at WordPress. Read it. Awesome. And <laughs> lastly, uh, Alyssa. Who are you? What do you do? What do you pronouns? Uh, hey, I'm Alyssa. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I make video games. At least that's what I get paid for for the moment. That's that pretty cool. I wanted to get oh, and I'm expecting problems on Twitter because I'm a, an optimist. <laughs> I w I'm so excited to have so many like like legit people who have like um like who are excited about sci-fi um on this one. Yes. Um, before we get started, um, I want to go over X card protocol. Um, so we're playing a role-playing game. Um, where we're going to maybe investigate some strange or unsettling things. Um, there might be violence, there might be um, all kinds of weird shit. So I want to make sure that we're all, we all understand that we're all adults playing together and that we respect each other. Um, and if any of us come into a situation where we're not comfortable, where we want to back out, where something's, uh, something's maybe um, triggering for us or we, we, we can't handle the content that's happening, um, we have two methods to communicate that to the group. One is to say red, uh, is to say red card, I'd like to red card this. Um, um, and the other is to um, use a, uh, a hand signal because sometimes people become nonverbal and they can't use words when they're in those situations. So if that happens, um, we put our hand up to the, to the screen. Um, I'm just, <laughs> I've got two cameras set up. Um, so... <laughs> um, can, like we, that. can we can we all just do that for a second so we all understand what that looks like? Um, mm -hmm. Cool, great, good, cool. That is our cool. symbol for like I'm not okay. Um, and if that happens, we're going to stop. We're going to um, take a step back, um, and we're going to like just um, whatever just happened. We cancel it. It didn't happen, and we move on. Um, we won't ask you, why are you upset by this? Anything like that. The only question I might ask is, what is the thing you want me to avoid in future? Um, mm. And that's, this is about respect for our other players um, and about making sure that we're not actually hurting people when we're playing. So I'm, I just wanted to make sure that we've got that covered. But with that sorted, I'm very excited to get a look at, um, get to look at Scum and Villainy. We're going to get into some space times, and it's so exciting. I've been like devouring <laughs> this book for like the last twenty four hours. Um, yes. Like I'd previously just been like I've been like reading Blades in the Dark, like cover to cover, and then I was like, I need a space game for the uh, for these people to play. And then I was like, there is the perfect space game. It's um, such a natural fit. Exactly. Um, right. Like like as soon as I was reading Blades, I was like, there needs to be a game that is the Firefly hack of this, and like. So um, the summary for Scum and Villainy is you play scoundrels, folks on the edge of the law and ne'er-do-wells making their way on the, in the Procyon sec sector of the Galactic Hegemonic Alliance. There are spaceships, blasters and aliens and strange space mystics. 
You and the other players run, uh, uh, run your business on board a fixer-up ship and take both legal and illicit jobs to improve your assets and status. Gameplay focuses on the moments of wild adventure during, uh, during a caper with occasional flashbacks and the downtime between jobs when you recover, meet old friends and contacts, and pursue personal interests. Um, they've given us a couple of touchstones like, uh, for like the kind of tone that the game is aimed at, so it's things like Star Wars, Guardians of the Galaxy, Serenity, and Firefly. Um, Cowboy Bebop, uh, Outlaw Star, Lost Universe, um, and the theme song, which is the bit that sold it for me, was it, it, the theme song is listed as being Ain't No Rest for the Wicked by Cage the Elephant, which makes me so happy. Oh, sick! Nice. I don't know how I missed that. Awesome. <laughs> it's kind of tells you everything, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, each player is going to create a crew member, um, and then, like, we'll work together to, um, to, like, bring our characters to life against each other um i'm going to be the gm so i'm going to be the universe um but because this is a blades hack um we're actually going to start off the first section of character creation is not creating characters it's choosing a ship um yes. so, so cool. <laughs> it's so good so choosing a ship is about establishing the tone and themes of our game so there are three ships to choose from um I'm, i'll put this on the screen for the so that the, oh gosh, it's on the screen so that um, chat can see. Um, the oh, come back here. You, I've got too many screens going on. Um, cool, that is coming up. All right, so we have the three uh, three different options are the star dancer, illicit merchants, smugglers, and blockade runners looking to do odd jobs and small thefts and find lost items. Um, we have the Cerberus, which is for bounty hunters and extraction spe specialists looking to find missing people or items and claim prizes on those criminals uh, uh, that the hegemony or others consider important enough or dangerous enough. And then there's the fire drake. Rebels and criminals hunted by the law and often beloved by the citizenry, looking to do jobs that free the oppressed, um, protect the downtrodden and fight the iron fist of the hegemony. Um, so, like, yeah, I, we were saying earlier, the start answer feels, like a, feels very much like Firefly, wh whereas the fire drake feels yeah. very much like um the um the millennium falcon sort of uh mm. rebel Alliance actually it kind of, of feels a lot like um uh five drive feels like blake seven mm. golden military <laughs> ship fighting up against the the bad guys yeah yeah. yeah 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 so as far as like establishing the tone of our game do we have one that we feel like is most comfortable for us um i like yeah. all of them <laughs> I think David was saying that he would prefer to avoid a fire drake to uh, rein in his own uh, but, but, instincts. I have a military ship? Awesome. We're going to do military <laughs> things. Let's just, maybe we should stay away from that. Um, as far as, as, far as like, um, capabilities, if you scroll through a little bit, you'll see that, the, that they have different... So the, um, the start answer starts with um, pretty good engines in hull. Um, so it has a jump drive and a cargo hold and smuggling compartments. Um, the Cerberus starts with a jump drive and a long range scanner, and it's got pretty even uh, engines, uh, comms, and weapons, but not great hull. Um, and then, um, and then the Fire Drake has, and we can like change the the model and the name of our ship. But this is just like statistic, the stats for them. Um, yeah, the. Uh, the fire drake is um has weapons and engines and hull um and it is a corvette rather than a freighter which means that it's not really it uh it's not really designed for landing on planets mm -hmm. so the other two are both um freighters they're both freighters yep so they're a bit smaller okay. mm. i think i i really like this star dancer and the cerberus and what caught my attention before was that the star dancer has that home cooked meal, home yeah, so cooking the, special ability. One, so one yeah, of the special that's abilities that you, can, that you can pick for that is home cooked meal, um, which is like but, the, it's the classic one. Yeah, totally. The on the other hand, the Cerberus has crew gear could include alien pet. Like <laughs> that's amazing. That is pretty good. Yeah. A ship cat, like, come I've on. I've seen ducks. Alien, alien ship cat, cat alien tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, actually, it could be giant. <laughs> um, just looking at the three of them, I'm not thinking at all in terms of stats because I tend not to 
think about that very much, often yes. to my detriment. But um, the the third one doesn't really appeal to me very much because it just seems a little too nice. Like the the military one is actually the, helping it's, people it's sort of feels hero one. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, honestly, I haven't role played in a very long time, and the last time I did, I played a paladin. <laughs> yeah, right. so, like, that feels a little bit too much like playing a slightly edge of the law paladin type scenario, yeah. and I kind of feel yeah. the other two are a bit closer to you what? know the the whole okay. Fire Millennium Paladin type thing. So we, we we've decided we're not playing the the Fire Drake. So the question we don't is, want to help. <laughs> with, no, well, I mean, we don't want to be we don't want to be like folk hero paladins. That's the, mm. like we can help people as <laughs> as like you know hardened gun runners that kill people for money. We can still help people. But we're not, we're not the Rebel Alliance or something, nice. though. The SS Robin Hood. Yeah, exactly. We're not Robin Hood. <laughs> We've established that. The question then is, do we want to go for the... Do we want to go for the... Uh, guns out, like, hardcore, like, shoot, space shooting? Or do we want to go the, like... Um, like... Like, the difference, basically, is if you start with the Cerberus, you get guns. If you start mm. with the um, with the start answer, you get smuggling compartments. That that's mm. uh, yeah, they're both cool. Well, when you put it that way, <laughs> <laughs> I do sort of want guns. I think bounty hunting is cool. cool. Yeah, bounty yeah. hunting. <laughs> Yeah. At first, I thought. I, at first, I was like, oh, I'm not really interested in the bounty hunting. But now I'm like, I've like haven't played anything like that. So now I kind of want to do, give it a go. But, but also, you know, you don't need to be involved. Like you could be like, I'm just stuck with you guys. You guys are the bounty hunting. I mean, I'll. The, the important yeah. thing of this mechanic is to make sure that everyone buys into the same kind of story. Oh, yeah. totally. I, I'm, I'm totally up right now. You can play first, who doesn't want to be. That's fine. <laughs> as long as yes. you're okay with those kinds of stories. So Cerberus so sounds really cool. The only thing that leaps out at me about those two ships, particularly, is that the star dancer looks and sounds like something that needs more duct tape to keep running, and that kind of appeals to me. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, like, here's the thing: like, they definitely both need duct tape, like, in serious <laughs> quantities. Um, I'm pretty sure that neither of those ships have have crew quarters. Uh, <laughs> so we just got like oh. a hammock and a cockpit or something. Until, like... you, until you've got that, you're going to have to like make a jump in hyperspace to somewhere that has a motel oh and right then, okay like, and like actually stop at truck stops yeah um, yeah what if uh, we each had a different cool. compartment? yeah i was gonna say can we sleep in this <laughs> i mean that's the thing right if you if you get if you i mean if you are the star dancer you've already got smuggling compartments if you get your hull up to three then your smuggling compartments are capable of holding people Oh, right. It's just, you're being smuggled. It's, yeah. It's, it's like breathing space under the floor, mm. which isn't... But can we get back to the bit about where the ship, the other ship has guns? Yeah. <laughs> so, so the, the, the Cerberus <laughs> starts with a long-range scanner. Um, sorry, I was wrong. It doesn't. It starts with it starts with grapplers and a, jump, uh, and a long-range scanner. So. But I notice under grapplers it says particle cannon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can buy them. Yep. That's there's a nice. slot there waiting for you to buy particle cannons. Nice, nice. I mean the the like the uh, Cerberus looks cooler. Like it looks like an anime kind of thing. I'm pretty here for it. I mean it looks like something out of um it, what's Spike Spiegel's ship? It looks like the sort of cowboy. The, yeah, it looks, it looks like cowboy bebop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Um. <clears throat> Oh, that's, yeah, I, sorry, um, I don't know if you saw in chat there, David, uh, someone, um, Lucas pointed out that you really need to know that the muscle can take a gun as their close friend or rival, um, <laughs> if you are the muscle. Oh, yes, oh, no, I have plans for that. Cool, all right, <laughs> good. Um, all right, yeah, no, it, it, it looks like the swordfish. Um, cool, all right, so I think it sounds like we're doing the Cerberus. Can I get a show of hands for Cerberus? We all good? All right. Alyssa, thoughts? Oh, I'm, I'm fine with the Cerberus. It's just not my preference. But like, okay, honestly, yeah. it doesn't make a massive difference. Cool. Um, they both sound really interesting. Like in terms of what the Cerberus is supposed to be, being a bounty hunter thing, that actually sounds really exciting. I just don't like the look of the ship. I Can know, I right? It? Here's the thing, Alyssa, <laughs> I will let you find a picture of a better ship. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we we voted ship. for Cerberus. You find what the Cerberus looks like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, and we can, we can say that it's a, that it's a... How big is it supposed to be? 
It's a freighter, so it's uh, so um, the size size things go fr personal freighter, corvette, frigate, dreadnought. So a freighter is about the size of a light train, is my understanding. Um, about the size of a have a light plane. Um, so like um, about the size of the Falcon, I'm guessing. It's a freighter, you know. Yeah. All right. Whereas a Corvette is, is 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 much larger. Um, is yeah. Um, cool. All right. So now that we've done that, we we've established what kind of crew we are. We are bounty hunters um, on board a um, on board a Cerberus, which is really exciting because um, I haven't seen anyone play the Cerberus yet. Because um, I've been watching I've been watching other people play, trying desperately to like understand the game. So now. Um, once all this is back, I mean, we can start on choosing our playbooks. So we can have a bit of a discussion about what our crew is made up of, what kind of people our crew is made up of. Um, so playbooks are, if you're not familiar with that, that term from Apocalypse World style games, um, it's basically character classes. Um, they... But playbooks are, if you're not familiar with... Whoa. Um... <laughs> so we have um, we have the mechanic, the muscle, the mystic, the pilot, the scoundrel, the speaker, um, and the stitch. Um, has anyone got feelings about what kind of character they'd like to play? I think uh, I'm going to go pilot. Yeah, that sounds Sorry. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Um, I was looking right. through the king, the special abilities, and like there's a few that I'm tossing up between. So yeah, I think that's a good choice for me so far. Cool, awesome. <laughs> um, David, are you feeling the muscle? Is that what you were saying? I'm, I'm feeling <laughs> the muscle. Yes. <laughs> David, are yeah. you feeling the muscle? <laughs> I mean, I can't. I can't. Them guns. Um, <laughs> Check out these guns. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, useless. it all comes back to the guns. Check out these guns. Sorry, I just have a quick question. When I type, do, like, does my my is this is my mic actually picking up this? Because it's about the loudest keyboard in the history. Yeah, we of the are planet. picking up your keyboard. Uh, Alyssa, right, it is so switch. loud. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I think I would check because see, um, I actually have to switch keyboards whenever my coworkers are here because it it's, sounds it's too much loud. like thunder. Mine's pretty and loud. I'm gonna do that now just for yeah, your benefit. You'll, if you hear mine going like donk donk donk, that's that's me. Sorry. Um, <laughs> all right. Cool. Um, so, where's my character creation? Um, all right. So, in your character sheet, the, I love these character sheets. They're so gorgeous. Um, They're lovely, aren't they? Uh, yeah. So, you should be able to put in. Um, we haven't. We should probably come up with a crew name, but um, you should be able to fill out the playbook there, um, and you can put in the description of your playbook if you want. Um, and then we're going to choose um, our starting ability and special ability. So you get a starting ability for being your uh, for being your class. Um, so the people who've made their decision can, um, with their little starting ability there, you should be able to um, go to the oh, abilities yeah. section. Where is it gone? Um, why is it on the character sheet? Is it in notes? Uh. No, starting ability. I see it. It's underneath. Um, it's underneath harm. It's in the left-hand column. Um, so you should be able to put your starting ability in there, and you should be able to pick one of those special abilities. Um, Melody and Alyssa, do you have any thoughts about like what kind of characters you'd like to play? I'm tossing up between scoundrel and mechanic, which is pretty much what I was left with because the idea of playing a mystic makes me just feel stoned. So. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, well, I mean, we could, uh, sorry, uh, who are the other two? We, we've, um, we've, we've got, got a muscle mystic. and we've got a pilot. And a pilot. Okay. Yep. So, I don't know, like, um, I was pondering, so I kind of had a vague personality in mind and then I was trying to imagine what sort of role that character would fit. Mm -hmm. And weirdly enough, the one that it doesn't seem to work with at all is scoundrel. And that makes me think it could be more interesting. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, I'm just, we're just waiting for Melody's laptop has frozen. We're just waiting for that to recover. So, like, yeah, the question is, like, are you trying to... Oh, no, this all... Now will look real weird. All right, sorry, chat. We'll be back in a second. 
Yeah, and that's a good point. We could have two scoundrels or two mechanics. You could also yeah, have like two muscle. Like it's just there's. Like and it's, you can double muscles. up in anything. I mean, double the muscle is. Wait, I can re regret saying that. <laughs> um, I wonder if this will give us. Hey, I mean those those names are nearly right, but um, at least we can see people. Um, just wait for Melody to return. Um, what kind of yeah? What kind of character are you feeling? Like as far as personality, are you feeling like reckless and and crazy and or more like? The question is: Do any of the do any of the like special abilities appeal to your character idea as far as personality, Alyssa? Um, I don't know. Let me have a look through the. So I mean, one like the. I kind of like what what I sort of had in mind was a very. Um, a woman who's very, very proper in the way she approaches everything. And that's why it didn't seem to fit very well with Scoundrel. But at the same time, it occurred to me um, that a, a key thing with Scoundrel um, is, I don't know, just thinking, uh, looking at all the special abilities and stuff like that. I know a guy, never tell me the odds, uh, all those sort of things. You can sort of imagine that fitting with a different kind of um, personality. It's just a kind of like talked her way into a whole bunch of different situations. Um, and has a whole pool of people that she knows or may have potentially slept with while they were married or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, her yeah. contact is very useful. But yeah. No, you could, that, like, like, cause, like, this, like, if you're saying a very proper person, the speaker sounds the, like the obvious one, but I like the, I like taking it in an interesting direction with Scoundrel. Um, yeah. I kind of like the, the idea that she, I mean, I'm sort of imagining that she's, like, her background would be completely inappropriate to in this sector. Um, <laughs> but she kind of, sort of moved here when she was relatively young so kind of has gotten used to it but still doesn't quite seem like she fits in she doesn't like her clothes tend to be better than you would expect she speaks more properly and yet still somehow gets herself in all the horrible situations you could kind of go with the whole like british nobility on the run kind of thing you know nice. um like bit of a a, a, a cad and a bounder kind of thing well, yeah, I was, I was kind of thinking that um, one possibility was that, for instance, uh, she was actually sort of like, you know, comes from a, a family that was relative, uh, relatively uh, mm -hmm. well off and actually sort of was, was part of some sort of elite military organization or something like that. But then cool. her own issues got her kicked out. Mm. So she's sort of like she had everything going for her, but she can't keep her sort of relatively impulsive behavior. I mean, that, um, under yeah, that definitely sounds like uh, a thing yeah. that would work for a scoundrel. It would, if you were doing the um, mechanic, I can think of like one character in fiction, which is like the old guy in the, in the episode of Firefly where they go to the fancy party, and there's like the one old guy who actually oh. knows about mechanics. Um, but I, th I feel like scoundrel works for that kind of concept. Um, <laughs> so I, th I feel like that works. Um, Ooh. Melody, welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm thinking mechanic. Yeah. Um, are we playing the setting out of the book? Because there was something in there I noticed when I was looking through it earlier that gave me the an idea. The starting thing. Uh, just the whole general setting, oh, the, the setting, hegemony. Yeah. The setting, the, like yeah, the game okay, necessitates cool. the setting. Great. Because I noticed one of the things in there was like, um, I think it was called Yaru, the Makers Guild. They like um, make clones. Yeah. They um, do. Yeah. And yeah. I was thinking like. I, I was kind of, and they've got like a like a tattoo emblazoned on their yeah. forehead showing that and, they're a clone. And then you like and like an the rules say clone that they're creepy all the time. Oh really? The the clones are. Yeah, unless you're like a oh. really high quality, unless you're a li really high quality yeah. luxury one, in which case you're slightly less creepy. Yeah, but still like off putting. Yeah. Luxury clone. Yeah, like the the Yaru are, are in the rules, like the clones are yeah. like are, are said to make everyone around them unsettled. Okay. Hmm. But you can totally do that. Also, if anyone wants to yeah. be a Xeno, um, sorry, not human, you're welcome to do that as well. Mm. Um, in which case, I think you replace your starting ability. Let me check. Um, yeah, I think it's how it works. Yeah. Hmm. Um, cool. Yeah, you replace your starting ability with, uh, with Xeno. You may spend stress 0 to 3 to perform an inhuman feat only members of your species can do. Such as if you're like a memish, you could uh, you can like breathe water for free, but like if you're going to like detect electrical things in the air, then that requires you to spend stress. 
Mm. But you can totally so, play the Yaru coin if you want to. Yeah, and you can cool. Play yeah, I'll do that. You can play one Sounds that's, fun. that's weirdly not creepy if you want. For whatever oh, reason. no, cre creepy's fine. I'm just, um, <laughs> I guess... fine. I can do creepy. <laughs> I can do creepy. <laughs> um, yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. yeah, so, and like, you know, you, you know, assuming you are like a, either an escaped or like a clone that's got out of being a clone somehow, like, mm. you know, it kind of helps to be on a ship of scoundrels, like, yeah, definitely. some of whom have guns. Um, yeah. yep. And, you know, <laughs> and uh, my understanding is that most of the clones are made for um, manual, labor, manual labor. So yeah. stuff like mechanics, mechanics is, um, a, is a great set, is a great repairing thing. Yep. And like, what 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 better place to live out your doomed half life than <laughs> on than a ship in the in the this tiny little ship? Yeah. Mm. At least you get to see the. It's stars. great, and pe people can just like sometimes wake up and see me standing there being creepy, and just right. um, yeah, it'll be the worst. All right, cool. So Let you want to chuck your starting ability? Actually, so um, yep. I'm just gonna get people to read at me. What is what starting ability and what special ability they've chosen f um, for me? I'll, get, yep. I'll start with you, David. All right. So uh, basically, I'm just copying and pasting from the rule book into the character sheet. It seems yep. the easiest way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my starting ability is unstoppable, which basically means um, you can push yourself to do one of the following. Perform a feat of physical force that verges on the superhuman um, uh, or engage a small gang on equal footing. Oh, this is the same as not to be fucked with in Apocalypse World. You count as a gang. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, basically, yes, uh, this guy is not to be fucked with. Yeah. But as his special ability... Um, he's taken bodyguard. Um, you can push yourself to do one of the following. Uh, oh shit! I've copied the same thing. Um, sorry. Uh, it, um, uh, bodyguard basically means uh, when you protect, which is an action, a crewmate resists with plus one die, and when I take harm, I actually clear one stress. That's so I get hurt cool. protecting you. I chill. That's awesome. Um, the other thing that uh, some, that uh, Luke pointed out we should do is um, read out your XP trigger because you get an XP trigger for um for your playbook as well yes um, uh, mine is um you addressed a tough challenge with force or threats <laughs> okay <yeah. laughs> all right so you get xp for doing that good job yeah um, basically okay. cutting the gordian knot is my thing yeah um maze how you doing have you got a uh, starting ability and special uh, ability or are you still making decisions yes uh, okay, so my starting ability is ace pilot you have potency on all speed related roles when you roll to resist the consequences of piloting, gain plus one D. Cool, awesome. Um, yeah, and then I don't know. Too many choices. I'm either yeah. So, leaf on the wind. When you push yourself, you may spend one stress and you gain. <laughs> oh. um, I can't play that literally. Yeah, one effect and one D instead of one or the other. Yep. Or commander, when you lead a group action, gain one scale. So yeah, a group right. can count as a medium group or large. That's really cool. Yeah, that's mm. cool. I okay, I'll do that one then. <laughs> so I just kept hearing say, commando and words. group action. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, and what is your XP trigger? Hurry up. Um, so do I choose one of the three that they have? The second uh, one no, 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 is good. So, yeah, so the... the um, the second one that isn't in um so it's the one that's unique so um it's the second one in the list yeah um so yeah, every time so... you roll a desperate action mark xp that is your actions that uh, is like mm -hmm. it for everyone the second one for you so your one is you addressed a tough mm. challenge with speed or flair so you speed get flair. for doing that stuff mm -hmm. um yep. Alyssa, how are you feeling about special abilities and starting abilities? Um, I just, I'm staring at them now, and there's one or two that... They all seem kind of interesting, but not quite appropriate, so I'm sort of picking the one that seems the most reasonable. Yeah. What's your starting ability? Uh, serendipitous. Your crew starts with plus one gambit when the pool resets. Which is really and nice. I, so, I don't actually know what that means, so I can so, figure okay, out based uh, on the gambit. Context. So, okay, um, just so we, uh, we're like all on the same page as far as what that means, um, when you roll dice in this game, you roll uh, a number of dice equal to how many dots you have in such and such. So, for instance, if you are um, going to command someone, you, you roll a number of dice equal to your dots in command. 
you can get bonus dice either by pushing yourself, which is um, which is like spending stress um, to get a bonus dice, or accepting a devil's bargain, where I'm like, you can get a bonus dice if this happens, and then you choose to accept mm -hmm. it. Um, if you assist someone, you can give someone a bonus dice. Um, or if you spend a gambit, you get a bonus dice. So having an extra gambit uh, every time the every time the pool resets, instead of starting out with two, I think you start out with three each time. That's pretty nice. Um, as far Sorry. as special abilities, what's yeah? Did you, did you say which one was? Feeling most appropriate? Made the most sense? Um, either, probably, I, I know a guy makes the most sense, but I also feel like it's probably the least interesting special ability. Um, I, I, mean, I kind of like it because it, you, you create, you build the game with it. Yeah, it's, it, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of what I was thinking. It, it, it's more of a, like, I, I think it'll be useful for, for the storytelling aspect. Mm. Um, and of course, you know, what I know about the guy is a whole different question. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I think I know a guy makes sense. Cool. So, right. serendipitous, I know a guy. Cool. And did you, what's your XP trigger for that one? Uh, I don't know. Where's that? Um, right, bottom. Under, right at the bottom, under mark XP, is the second dot point. Uh, every time you roll this production, mark XP in that. No, the action. one below that one. Uh, you address the tough challenge with charm or, or audacity. Awesome. Ooh. Cool. All right. I like what the, are the other ones. Like, um, oh, so there's four right, there, sorry. but only one of them is unique to your playbook. Oh, okay. Right. So the second one is the one that's, that is that is unique to your playbook. Um, right. So I have to be charming. Excellent. Yep. <laughs> or audacious. Or audacious. <sighs> Right. Um, and Melody, how are you going? Good, good. So my uh, starting ability is Tinker. When you work on a clock with rig or hack, or when you study a schematic, fill plus one segment. Excellent. So, like, so fucking around. With basically, it, so that kind of means I can do those things quicker. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, awesome, cool. Um, and for special ability, I am going with uh, fixed. You may expend your special armor to resist a consequence from machines breaking or being damaged, or to push yourself when repairing or building a machine. Ah, that's really cool. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, and given we like we're going to get into some kind of horrible danger, I assume it's going to come up, which is um, yeah, a lot of them were like kind of downtime ones, and I given it's a short like campaign, I don't know if yeah, that's going to come up as much downtime. Um, yeah, cool. Cool. Um, and I'm just looking for the XP trigger now. It's in the playbook, is it? Yep. Yeah. Um, down the bottom uh, of that of that middle column. Oh, radio. Yep. Um, so the second, so the second dot point. Did you say? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you addressed a tough challenge with technical skill or ingenuity. Excellent. Cool. All right. So. Um, you'll notice that on the right of your playbook, there are some, there, there are three sections, which are insight, prowess, and resolve. And each of those has four actions, um, which are doctor, hack, uh, doctor, hack, rig, study, helm, scramble, scrap, skulk, attune, command, consort, and sway. So these are the actions that we perform in the game. And you'll notice that some of them are already colored in on the, uh, on the, um, on the character sheet in the, in the book. Um, so if you can color those ones in the same on your character sheet, um, that those are the ones that your playbook starts with. You automatically get um, certain points and certain things. Um, the way the, the the reason for the insight and prowess and resolve thing is you'll notice that the first column is separated. Um, so when you go to roll, um, for instance, uh, when Melody goes to uh, roll to rig something. She will roll the, a number of dice equal to her rig dots, um, and then, but if she um, if she goes to roll insight, for instance, uh, when when you do a resistance roll, which is like a, a saving throw in Dungeons and Dragons or similar, um, which is basically you say whenever you decide you don't want something a consequence to happen or you want it to be less bad, um, you resist. Um, and you do that with insight, prowess, or resolve, which is the, the number of dots you have in insight is the number of dots you have in the first column under insight. 
and the number of dots you have under prowess there's the first column of prowess oh um, so right it's, cool it's on this cool. so column. if you have one in each then you've got four in the exactly like... so right oh that's really cool it's how like oh, well that's, balanced that's really elegant yeah, yeah right so it's, it's, the actual so, is actually quite useful yeah exactly mm. Um, so what we're going to do now is once you've colored in the ones that are in your book, um, we're going to, add, uh, we're going to, oh no, we're going to do heritage and background before we do action dots. Um, so, um, ch choose a heritage and detail it with a note about your family life. For instance, spacer, asteroid miners, um, and add an, and add one point to an action that reflects your heritage choice. I'm just seeing if there's a list of her heritages in here. There is one somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, oh, it's, it's, on the, the it's on the playbook. It's on the playbook. Oh, excellent. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that's why I didn't see it. Cool. Excellent. Um... Hey, one of these is directly relevant to me. Manufactured. It's... Wow. It's like they saw you coming. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. <laughs> um, I'm going to jump this over so that people can see what we're doing. Um, so, yeah, pick one of those and then, like, a little detail about yourself. Uh, so what, what sorry, it's to, uh, um, if you don't like yours, Alyssa, um, feel free to pick one from the speaker if you want to. Well, what's Imperial mean? Um, I'm know. sort of interpreting it as the Imperial forces in Star Wars, which is the bad yeah, side. The, the, the hegemony. I, I, the, I think it's the, yeah. the, the hegemony. is like you're part of, you, you, you are hegemonic right like you're part of the mm. um and that actually but, kind of fits for my character that like yeah. that was her background and um, yeah That's she's cool. not part of that anymore for reasons cool. yeah cool. um you and me both Alyssa. so i think that could be some interesting relationship for our characters yeah that's really cool um so yeah checking your heritage with a note And background would be noble. Mm. Yep, that makes sense. Um, I love the way there's an indel vice button on this character sheet. Yeah. Yeah, um, right? Yeah. Vices are an important Just part Just smash that button. How does the main yeah. go? That's, that's, and, that's and I've been hitting it all fucking game. And my vice is not indel, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like maybe that is your vice. Just hitting the button. <laughs> Cool. All right. So once we've got, um, so we're doing heritages and backgrounds, and once we've got those sorted, um, I'll jump back up to our character creation. Once we've got those sorted, then we can assign our extra action dots after the ones that are in the in the character sheet. So you get to choose um, two. So once you've chosen one action dot that makes sense based on your heritage, and one action dot that makes sense based on your background. Remember that no can, no no action can start with more than two dots when we're doing character creation. Um, what are the what are the actions? Are they the ones under insight prowess? Yep. Skills Skill basically. They're, yeah. they're your skills. Cool. So um, they are um, they are doctor, hack, rig, study, helm, scramble. Um, you, uh, the trackers on the, the next to prowess, insight, and resolve. Um, there's a little bar there. Just make sure you've got that empty because that's actually tracking XP for the uh, for that particular thing. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, what, what page is the list of what all these uh, Kajigas do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me find it for you. Um... I mean, like, I can guess what consort means, but I'm probably wrong. Nah, it's... I think it's like in the second or third page. Yeah, it's... Where am I? Um, here we go. No, it's, the, it's, on the, it's on the character creation page. Do you want me to read them out? I'll do that. So Worth we'll, doing, yeah. So, yeah. Um, the actions are as follows. As follows. You can attune to the way to communicate with non-sentient species or robots, sense unseen danger or killing intent, and safely handle precursor art artifacts or remnants. You can command obedience. Uh, you can command obedience or force. Um, uh, sorry, you can command obedience with your force or, uh, of personality. You can intimidate or threaten. Lead action with contractors or passengers. Um, you can consort with connections from your heritage, backgrounds, friends, or rivals to gain resources and information. Um, resources, information, people, or places. Um, you can doctor someone who's been injured, handle and identify substances, do science, comfort, support, or elicit sympathy. Um, 
You can hack computers, systems, and digital locks, reprogram robots or drones, jam surveillance and, and communications. You can helm a ship, ship system, land vehicle, or beast. Fire weaponry, plot, uh, um, plot a jump or in-system course. Uh, you can rig together mechanical solutions, disable, modify, repair, or create mechanisms. Uh, disable a trap, pick a lock, or crack a safe and rig explosives. You can scrap with an opponent to, uh, in blaster or physical combat, assault or hold a position, brawl, fight with melee weapons, or wrestle. You can scramble to a position far uh, um, from to a position or away from danger, lift, run, jump, swim, traverse harsh environments. You can skulk about unseen, pick pockets, employ subtle misdirection or sleight of hand. You can study a person, document, or item with close scrutiny to gather information and apply knowledge, gain deeper understanding, and do research. Or you can sway someone with charm, logic, deception, disguise, or bluffing. Change attitudes or behavior with ma manipulation or seduction. So, like, yeah, there are some in there mm. where it's like, yeah, consort is about who you know, almost. Um... Um, and like taking advantage of, uh, and like having relationships with people whereas sway is about like manipulation of them um, whether that's you know or like ethical or not like you could just be swaying them by telling them the truth about the so family right we get one for our heritage and one for our background yep yep all right well i'm thinking command and consort make sense because the imperial background and so Imperial Heritage and Noble Background, they respectively sort of fit what my character is and what she's yeah. been through as well. Definitely. That sounds excellent. Mm. Um, and then after that, you get to assign two action dots of your own for free. Um, remember that you can't have any ah. higher, any ranks higher. So um, so you should be have four action dots assigned after the ones that are on your playbook. I think your playbook is so, three. The two that makes it one, uh, one for heritage, one for background, and then just two whatever makes oh, yeah, sense. Two, three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Got it. Hmm. I've put two in command, one in consort, and one in scrap. And I think that covers my same heritage as Alyssa. So one in command. I mean, and you can use a different one for my on, on military. Want, but yeah, yep. That makes sense for military. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. And then consort because I think that a lot of military people stick together anyway. So yeah, yeah there's going to be a lot of there. Yeah. The great thing about this game is. Um, so if you don't have any dots in something, you roll two dice and take the lowest. But you can always like push yourself. With some, you can always push yourself with some stress to get a dice on something you don't have, mm. and then you've suddenly got a 50-50 chance mm. of success. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm thinking. Sorry. No, no. Um, I'm thinking the other two dots I'll put in Helm and Scramble because I figure beyond her sort of basic upbringing, when things started to go pear shaped. Um, like getting away from where she was was important and so learning enough to be able to actually yeah i'm feeling like there's a lot of overlap between um maze and Alyssa's characters um in that helm is the primary ability for um for pilots um then the other one i could do is um study because it makes sense that she's had that makes uh, sense and i don't think anyone else has said mm, that study yet no it's valuable I've, I've got one done study as a mechanic but yeah, i don't have any that's, extra that seems stuff. reasonable yeah yeah all right, so therefore it'd be study, scramble, um, command, and consort. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Um, um, well, I've got my basic two in scrap and one in command, but everything else. Um, so as an imperial but an orphan of the system, um, mm -hmm. I picked up Skulk. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and as a gilder, because I ran away to the stars, um, I picked up Helm. Um, and my other two dots went into Doctor and Rig because he's a bit of a jack of all trades. Yeah, cool, awesome. Cool. Um, I have a question. What, wh which guild? Um, guild of Engineers, Guild of Space People. The Punching Guild. The what guild? 
The Punching Guild. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, probably Guild of Engineers for yeah. Rig. Cool, cool, cool. Sounds yeah. good. Awesome. Um, that might give us some background between like like where um, you and uh, Melody's character maybe met. Yeah, mm. well, so one of the ideas I have for this character is he, he kind of he imprints on someone um, <laughs> he, and he wants to protect desperately and also thinks he's better than, than him. Um, so I think I think Melody. I think I think you yeah. I love that oh, you've imprinted on cool. someone. You are too like, beautiful for this world. Half life, <laughs> right? Like you've imprinted on a clone who will live to be much less old than you. <laughs> By the way, I like oh, angst. I like angst in my role playing, and uh, yeah, yes, oh, that's so all the cool. angst. You know how I feel about angst, David. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, now, um, as far as um, gear, the, this system does a really cool thing that it gets from Blades, where we don't have to pick our fucking gear. Um, <laughs> at yes, the, start of, yeah. the start of each mm. mission, we choose our load, which is either light, normal, or heavy. So if you're using a light load, you're faster, less conspicuous, and you can blend in with citizens. If you've got a normal load, you look like a scoundrel ready for trouble. And if you have a heavy load, you're slower, and you're obviously on a mission. You've got like gear hanging off you and stuff like that. Mm. But it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the list of gear. That so what happens is during your mission, you can be like, oh, I brought this, and you can just tick mm, it off. That's and, so cool. And and, and like and there say, are checkboxes for it, which is great. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the things that you can have brought. Um, Do you reckon that would fit in a handbag? Yeah, easily. And plus, it matches your outfit. Um, so that's appropriate. Um, cool. All right. So that's. Uh, now, pick your preferred type of vice or two um, and detail it with a short description. Um, Is there a list? There should be a list um, in your. In, it's on, on the, your on the playbook. Yeah, oh, cool. In the playbook. Um, Wait, faith is a vice? Yes. yes what? It Sorry? Is. You, if you're advice. a person who needs who who to if you're a person who de-stresses by going and praying, your vice is prayer mm. is faith. And here's the fun thing: all of these vices you can overindulge in and make trouble for yourself. So you can get way too like um, you can get way too enthusiastic about like the self-flagellation or whatever, and um, mm. yeah. So faith, I... gambling, luxury. Obligation, um, pleasure, stupor, and weird shit. <laughs> I love that weird is one. That's so great. Like, are you supposed to pick two vices? You can pick one, two but you, you can do you more. You only have to pick one. Hmm. I've chosen obligation. I think, as a military person, my character um, de-stresses by <laughs> just following orders and and not having to think about it too hard. Yeah, so obligation usually means that there's someone that you have an obligation to, and you go and, ah. and you and you tend to that in order to feel better, right? So whether that's a family or a person you care for or, um, or like a strict moral code that you have to then go and like follow or something like that. Um, yeah. Hmm. What happens if you pick two vices? Do you get some sort of benefit, or um, is it just a? It gives you both <laughs> more role playing opportunities. Like yeah, it gives you more opportunities. Like you, you can be a bit more flexible in the ways that you can actually pay off your vice, right? You can actually like you can actually do it easier because there's more options for you, but there's also more options for trouble related to it. Mm. For me, like luxury and pleasure seem perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've taken Cheap. pleasure. Yep. Nice. Cool. All right. Um, <laughs> so you and I drink together. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Um, I reckon pleasure and stupor. Yeah. Cool. I like the idea yeah. that, that what's really interesting to me is that drinking can be like three different ones of those, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> it can be luxury. It can be pleasure, or it can be stupor. Because they're not really about the specific thing. They're about the it's like about a, how you, you know. Do it. Yeah, yeah, cool. I mean, it could be faith. <laughs> <laughs> True. I must so, take um, communion, and I must take liters and liters of communion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, let's see if we can... How are we going for character creation stuff? Um, 
So once we've got our rival, uh, our, our vice, and yeah, do do like make a note of like what kind of stupor <laughs> are you going for? How do sure. you get that? What is the thing that you yeah. do? Right? Um, what <laughs> like what? Who are you obligated to? Um, mm. That sort of thing. Uh, make a make a note so that we have an understanding of that. Yeah, um, got that. Cool. Yeah, so I've got pleasure slash stupor. If there's a bar, a boardy house, or buttons there. Cool. Awesome. Mm. Anytime, there's, anytime there's shore leave, he's all about the shore leave. Cool. Um, Maze, did you work out like what kind of obligation you feel in? Uh, sort of like to go down with the team. Oh or, wow. Yeah, just sort of like. Oh respect. Protecting them or taking the damage for for them. I mean, the pro the problem I have with this is that it, yeah, I, I feel like that that's too like that that doesn't tie into the vice mechanic really well, and that it, Oof, it needs to be okay. something that you go away from the team to do, right? Uh, maybe, maybe you right. go off with a member of the team to do it, but it's a thing you go away and do. Um, mm, sure. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. Good break Yeah. Yeah. It's it, like surely what you mm. do on shore leave is a good uh, is a good way to explain that. Hmm. Um, all right i'll keep thinking yeah cool uh Alyssa, did you make did you have a note for yours yeah uh luxury so baths comfort nice bed that kind of thing just basically yes. standard living things that don't normally happen out here yeah. and pleasure is, is for, for her in the form of fine food and drink so cool. um yeah less i mean most things might fit but just generally it's like give me nice food and drinks and i'm gonna be more sated than usual yeah. cool excellent mm. um Okay, I love that my... particular one to gets Ooh. like uh, gets overindulged, and you're like, no, I just went on a caviar binge. Uh, <laughs> um, I was just thinking that. Yeah, Maze, <laughs> you, you're saying awesome. you've got you've got something. Uh, I changed mine to gambling, and just okay. like basically any time that they can take a risk. Yeah, yeah that's cool. All right, nice. Cool. Um, and Melody. Yeah, so I've got um, for pleasure, and let me know if this one doesn't really work, is basically um, for its own sake. Like, it doesn't matter what the specific pleasure is. It's like an assertion of, like, agency, and I'm going to go to something that's, like, just, you know, that feels really good. I don't care what it is. Right, you just want to... Because you're allowed to do it. Is that too broad? I don't think so. Okay, cool. Um, I'm um, going to use it to get you into lots of, like, weird... Oh, tricks. oh abs absolutely. Like, someone's going to be like, have you heard of roller coasters? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I've um, for my second one, I've got stupor uh, and um, chemical oblivion. Basically, just shut down conscious thought through mm. you know substances. Yeah. Don't you know? It's it's almost like the opposite. It's like the negation of the previous yeah, one. It's right. like yeah, no, it's, just it's don't think. Good don't sensations don't. or none. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Can I just say our shore leave um, uh, montage? <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Has anyone played Mass Effect the Citadel DLC? <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So once we've done our vices, we choose a close friend and a rival. Um, so on your character sheet, you should have a little list of people. Um, it's uh, for the mechanic, it's colorful friends. For the muscle, it's deadly friends. Um, <laughs> and you'll see that they have like a little uh, an up triangle and a down triangle. Um, so I'm going to get you, there's a section on the, on the character sheet for Strange Yeah, where friends. do these go on the character sheet? Strange Friends is on, it is under Gambit. Bottom um, right-hand corner. Bottom right-hand corner, yep. Um, so you're going to need one with an up triangle for, hey, they're on, they're your friend. They are either your, they're, they're maybe family, a close friend, a lover, um, and, um, and then someone who is maybe a former friend turned rival, an enemy, a scorned lover, a betrayed partner, they're your rival. And they get a downward pointing triangle because they don't like you. And you get to pick one of each of those. All right, this thing was pretty easy actually based on my background. I'm keen so... to hear. Yep. I like the fact that yours are quote unquote friends. <laughs> That's amazing. So I've got an idea that could be like too dark. Um, uh, okay, so 
um, one of the options is uh, slice a junkyard owner. Um, I'm thinking like maybe if a drone gets injured or can't keep uh, a clone can't keep gets injured and can't keep doing whatever it's meant to do, they go to like an organ reclamation facility somewhere. Uh, and my character escaped from there. <laughs> so is Slice your friend or your rival? No, Slice is like <laughs> the guy who runs the facility whose like professional reputation is now like seriously in question. Because you escaped? Yeah. Okay, because it could have gone either way, right? It could have been he helped you escape. Yeah, right? totally. But um, um, yeah, cool, awesome. So Slice does not like you. Okay. Yeah. And then I reckon my um, like f positive one is probably like can a family member who is like another clone. Mm, cool. Um, I feel like Ken is is a less elaborate clone than you. Mm, yeah, totally. That's awesome. But like someone who can still like they can like make things happen and you know um, like add things to the story and yeah. No, I feel I feel like they're probably. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like they're probably an escaped clone that is still like <clears throat> working for someone, but like totally not in the same yeah. way. Yeah. Um, yeah, totally. Like they're making a life for themselves as best they can, which mm. puts them in a position uh -huh. where they can affect the people they're working with. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Um, Alyssa, do you want to tell? You've got a smile on your face. Do you want to tell us about your? Uh... <laughs> no, actually, I was just thinking of a cut that I might use later. Um, oh God! So you're saving them up. Um, so yeah, so the, the friend um, would be Rin, a smuggler. So after things went totally pear-shaped at home, um, she needed to leave and she got a smuggler to help get her out of the core systems and get away from everyone who um, she was suddenly in trouble with. Mm -hmm. um, after which she didn't really have much to do with her life, but knew enough people around the place that she fell in with Batro, a bounty hunter. And so she got into her current gig. Except that she kind of maybe something happened she doesn't want to talk about and it kind of well, he doesn't like her very much anymore. Okay, cool. Batro is your rival. Awesome. Um, I see that David's got an enemy but not a friend. You <laughs> <laughs> uh, got a friend? Oh, okay. I can't, see, I can't see that yet. Oh, now I can. Okay, cool. enter. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. who have you got? Right. So, so. The, the enemy is a very fine pistol in the hands of somebody who wants to use it upon me. Oh, that's um, cool. Uh, I figure that um, getting out of the hegemony um, as an orphan, I probably ran with some gangs and I abandoned one of them and probably like turned them in to get out. That was how I got out. Mm. Um, and now someone who is probably my best friend from back then is gunning for me. Um, cool. Um, whereas my friend is a crooked cop. <laughs> nice, oh, awesome. nice. Yeah. yeah. But you know, he's a he's a good guy. He's just yeah. crooked. He's just crooked. Yeah. I mean, if he weren't crooked, if he weren't crooked, he'd be a bad guy. He'd be part of the hegemony. Yeah. So, <laughs> if he weren't crooked, he'd be straight. And how boring would that be? Oh my god. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So that's Yazu, is it? Yep, that's Yazu. Yeah. Excellent. And Maze. Uh, have you got friends? Yes, so I've got Yatu, a game boss. I'm thinking they, um, maybe their game took on one of my trooper groups and, and won, perhaps. Maybe that was like my first loss on the field as a commander. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have Maz, a former mentor who I think um, taught me loyalty. It was maybe the first person outside of my family who I could relate to on a military level. Cool. So <laughs> which one of those is the friend, just to confirm? Oh, uh, Matt. Matt. Matt okay, is just the checking. friend. Yeah. I'm just checking, right? Because it, be, it could be that, like, the, the Yatu mm. thing could be, like, we, like, respect each other. but And, mm. like, Maz could be, like, disappointed uh, that you fucked off. But, like, you know. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, my story of how I got out of the military was perhaps maybe um, like I was accidentally lost or accidentally abandoned or something. And now I'm scared of going back unless they mm. kill me oh, for abandoning them. Are you listed as mm. a fatality? Oh, right. Yes. Like, like, <laughs> you died, right? And you know that you can't yeah, go back because yeah. like you, you died commanding a mission that fucked up. 
and yeah <laughs> Ooh, brutal. Exactly. yeah so i still have like a lot of loyalty and a lot of that sort of this is how things are meant to be but mm. i can't go back yeah mm. cool all right um so once we've done that we're doing name alias and look um so um you can choose names from the list there um i think that the, it's on it's on page four of the thing under character creation or you can just come up with something um but you will need an alias as well as a name there's some classics there lando know, right? yeah. Kirk. yeah yeah ray is hard name, hard. right like <laughs> Oh, actually, no. All right. Um, which one do we get called a lot in game? Like. Our crew. I mean, that's up to mates. you. Whether do they you call, call us by other? our do alias? You call you? Like that's that's okay. a norm for you to establish amongst yourselves. Um. Mm. But like mo most of the people I've seen, like. Mm, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, that, that's up to you to establish amongst yourselves. I think. Yeah, you know, some people would be happy with a nickname. For some people, a nickname is purely external. I would imagine. And so for some people, mm. like a nickname is a thing that hangs around them that they don't want. <gasps> yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm. I Yeah, cool. I'm an odd keyboard. <laughs> the list of aliases is pretty cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> what I might do is Seeing as this is the last thing, is names, family names, aliases, and looks, maybe we might take a break um, to make a cup of tea. We can mull it over, think about it, and come back in a minute. Sounds cool. good. Cool. Cool. All right. We'll be back in... F we'll, we'll aim for five minutes. Um, sometimes we go to ten, but we'll try for five. <laughs> All right. Back in a minute, chat.